Hi everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome to The French Seams. Thanks very much for joining me again for another video. This is my end of summer mix video. So I put out a summer plans video much, much earlier in the year. I'll link to it below. And then I did a kind of a halfway summer mix and now I'm doing my end of summer mix. I decided to break it into two because it would just be way too much to put in one vlog. And also I got things made up earlier in the summer and then other things got added. I got things made up later in the summer. So I wanted to kind of break it in two and I thought now would be a good chance to send this out to you because it's getting towards autumn now. And I just want to do a quick roundup um, of all the bits I've got done recently. So I'm midway through a lovely sewing day. So I think this is going to come out after my spend a day with me sewing. So you'll know, you'll know why I'm in this top. You'll know what's going on today. So I'll also link that below. But I have my trusty notebook here. I've got everything listed. So I think we shall crack on. Uh, as always, thank you so much to anybody who watched any of my previous videos, anybody who's left a thumbs up, anybody who's left a comment, subscribed. Thank you very, very much. If you are new to my channel, you are very, very welcome. And if you are a regular viewer and subscriber, then welcome back. So apologies if I sound a little bit uh, hoarse. I do have a little bit of a cold. So moving on. So what didn't I get done, first of all, in the summer, the, the plans that I did make? So there are, I think, only two things I didn't actually get made up. One was the boys' swimming towels, the hooded towels from my little boys. They was a bit of a disaster with those. Yeah, they didn't turn out too well, but I am determined to finish them and they can easily be a winter make as well. And then the other thing I had planned that I didn't get made up was my heather blazer in the seersucker circle fabric. The weather wasn't playing ball. I never could find um, suitable lining for it. So that just didn't happen. So that'll be kept for um, early next year. I'm determined to get that done. So maybe it'll be a spring make next year. But everything else I got made up and then even things that I didn't have in my original plans video, I did get made up because they kind of got added midsummer. So I did make an awful lot of other little makes that I'm not really going to show because I've been showing them on my Friday sews, like little scrappy makes, like little pencil cases, uh, toiletry bags, quilted bag, cable ties, things like that. So all of those are in my Friday sews videos. And uh, I've got a playlist of all my Friday sews over on my YouTube channel as well. I'll link that below if you want to catch up because that's more, more kind of day to day sewing as opposed to planned overall sewing. So let's get started, shall we? First up um, is my Nina Lee Q dress. So and I'll put it in a hanger for you because I think it might be easier. Um, so the Q dress I got made up and I was very, very kindly gifted this fabric by the lovely Catherine in Carlo Fabrics. Um, I'd seen it on the website and thought it was the cutest thing ever. And when I went to her lovely shop in May, she very kindly gave it to me. So thank you very, very much. I think it's fabulous ice cream print fabric. Move my little notebook back. Um, so it's a cotton poplin and it's got these beautiful ice creams on it. And this is the Nina Lee Q dress. So for all of these, I'll link everything below. I'll link the fabric, I'll link the pattern insofar as I can. And I'll also pop in some pictures of me wearing them. So I saw this fabric, I knew it had to be a summer dress. Back then I thought we were going to have a summer, but I did end up wearing it for my little nephew's birthday party and it was lovely. I just loved wearing this. Um, so it has three views. Um, it is this strapless one, it has a cold shoulder view, and then I think it has a skirt, and this is the, just the one of the summer straps. Um, I made view A, I made a size 10 grading to a size 12. Apologies, I will have to stop to, to cough. I'll be editing all that out, you don't need to see that. So yes, I made a size, size 10 grading to a size 12. It is quite a close fitting garment, I will say that. It is, it's, it's a little bit smaller than I thought it would be. Um, so the buttons are kind of a uh, strategically placed shall we say. Um, I added two inches to the bodice. I did actually do a quick twirl of the bodice because I had heard that it came up a bit small. So I'm five foot nine so I did need that extra bit of length to make the skirt fall actually my natural waist which it does now. Um, I think there's 15 buttonholes. One of them is a bit dodgy but the rest of them are okay and I got these fabulous buttons from Vibes and Scribes down in Cork and they're all different colour heart buttons which I think go really nicely because there's little hearts on each of the ice creams too. So all different colour hearts all the way down and I think this is really cute. So um, this is lovely with a little cardigan if it's a bit cooler but yeah it's just a lovely little make and I do like Neil Lee patterns. I made a couple. That's just not going to stay, is it? Um, so very happy with how this came out in the end. It does have a facing, so it looks quite neat and tidy on the inside. And uh, the darts, darts are a little bit high. If I was making this again, I'd, I'd lower those darts a little bit. There's a very good um, tutorial on the By Hand London website on how to lower and raise darts, which I'll link below as well. So this is the first um, make I'd like to show you, and it's a Nina Lee Q dress. So moving on to the next make is the Magnolia. So this is probably one of my proudest summer makes. So myself and my husband went to a wedding in July and uh, what I wanted was a kind of um, a more 
I say more kind of formal dress, I think. And I saw this beautiful fabric from Beyond the Pink Door, beautiful viscose, and it was so lovely to work with. And I put out um, a shout on my blog for recommendations and a few of you did say the Magnolia. So this is a um, deer and doe pattern. It has a number of views. You can do a more plunging neckline. This is just one that goes into the waistband. This is the flutter sleeves. You can do big balloon sleeves. Then it's got a short dress, I think, and then a full length maxi dress with slit, which looks fabulous but I kind of did a hybrid of the two I think it's this is just kind of um midi on me the sleeves are fabulous it's got a gorgeous bow at the back um, and it's got an invisible zipper down the side and then the inside is all bound and I got beautiful satin bias binding for this and a little label as well so love this I made a size 40 and I added one inch to the bodice again I did actually do a toile it comes together very very quickly um oh, I should say I'm a sewing a cup um because people were asking, does it gape? And it doesn't really on me, which is great. So, but I did make a toile. I was so proud of myself. And this actually comes together very, very quickly. I was really surprised. Um, I think it's very, very comfortable. The back, it has you put the, attach the bow to the front bodice, but actually I attached it to the back bodice, which means that when you unzip it, you don't have to untie the bow. So I think that's pretty easier. Um, the binding went in perfectly. All this lies perfectly flat and I would definitely make another one of these. I don't know what I necessarily make the full on plunging neckline, but I would make this version again, maybe with the balloon sleeves. I think it's just a gorgeous dress. It's super comfortable. I was really happy wearing this to the wedding. I got an awful lot of compliments on it. And uh, because I also made a matching bag, which is wonderful. When you make your own clothes for an event like this, you always have to make matching accessories. I was going to make a matching headband, which I usually do, but I thought that might be, yeah, going a little bit OTT. So this is my matching bag. This is the bow bag from So Over It. It's a relatively new pattern. I think it's only about a fiver. It's great. And it's got a zip. And then I lined it with a fat quarter, which is 101 Dalmatians. So this matches perfectly. It holds loads and everything you need for a wedding. And yeah, I just loved how these two look together. So very, very happy with those makes. Next up is another little party dress, and this is the Fibre Mood Jill dress, again from fabric from Beyond the Pink Door, this beautiful uh, leaf print fabric. So I, I, again, this is a recommendation when I put out a shout for um, party dresses or more kind of going outy dresses as opposed to just day dresses. And I have made a few Fibre Mood patterns, but the instructions. So I don't want to talk too negatively, but the instructions are just, they're tricky to say the least. They think they take about a paragraph to describe what you could do in one word and that is understitch but anyway so we got there in the end so it looks like just a plain bodice in the front it's got an elasticated waist and then it's got a lovely full skirt however the back oops um has got a lovely keyhole here this calls for a ruler loop but i just did a thread loop instead and a little button and then it's got this big open section at the back and it's got a little tie here which is just purely decorative so I made um, a size medium according to my measurements, which basically they call it a size 12 to 14, but a medium kind of encompasses quite a lot, I think. Um, and I added two inches to the bodice to make this sit in my, sit in my natural waist. Um, so what I did at the back, I there's no length and shortened line, so I extended it from the bottom, which of course I shouldn't have done. I should have done it mid here so the V isn't too gapy, but I did end up having to put a few darts in here, but you wouldn't notice at all. Um, there are lots and lots of facings. So you can see there's a front facing, there's a back facing, there's a facing in here, there's a facing in here, there are facings here, there are facings here. Anyway, so it's beautifully finished on the inside, but if you do not like facings, then don't even attempt this because I don't even know how you'd go about binding this. Otherwise, no, that would be a head scratcher. If you can do that, more power to you. So it is a lovely pattern. It's got a nice little casing at the back. It looks really pretty, but it's just so much faff. I, I do like it, but I don't think I'll be making another one. I did enjoy wearing it on a night out, though it was very, very pretty, nice and floaty. But no, I think I don't think I'll be revisiting this pattern. But anyway, a beautiful fabric, very cute dress. But yes, this is the Fibre Mood Jill dress. So moving on to the next one, and this is a tote bag. So I, again, was recommended this. So thank you, lovely people. So I went to the fabric outlet with the lovely Agatha in May, I think, and they have beautiful uh, home furnishing fabrics, canvas fabrics, and I found this, which is flamingos. You know how I feel about flamingos. And I wanted a really big summer tote bag. And one of you lovely people recommended the Ellie and Mac tote to go bag, which is a free pattern and it is fabulous. So it's enormous. It's got a front pocket here, which I did pattern match and I'm very happy with. It's got the lovely webbing. So I got this webbing from Culture and Stitch. 
and the inside then it's tied with little uh, straps and then it does have a little welt pocket on the inside which is great so you can keep kind of things like keys in your phone and stuff which is great. I then put a little patch from uh, Kylie and Machine says making is magic and little um uh what do you call those it's not a stunt globe crystal ball there we go which is cute and all in all it's just a fabulous bag pattern so I did bring this on summer holidays and it carries a load so yes I would definitely recommend this Ellie and Mac tote to go bag really really good huge pattern um, huge pattern huge bag and you could do another pocket on the back you could do more well pockets you could totally customize it to whatever you like really really good it wouldn't be too difficult to put a zip all across the top as well the sun is going in and out amongst the rain clouds and um, so yes highly recommend this pattern really really good so thank you for that recommendation Moving on, and hopefully you're still with me. What am I about 10 minutes in? Uh, yes, Sunday romper. So this is a Love Notions pattern when I was on my Love Notions kick there early in the summer. And I was a bit dubious about making this up because we weren't getting the weather. I keep talking about the weather. I'm so sorry. Um, but in the end, I just said, right, let's just make it. And I'm so glad I did because I ended up being able to wear it on our summer holidays. And I think it will come in handy going swimming with my boys and next summer as well. So the fabric is from Ecobee in this beautiful dotty dotty fabric, uh, stripey. So stripey you don't necessarily have to pattern match, although randomly this neckband pattern matched. I don't know how I managed that, but it's just got beautiful kind of watery summer colours, which I love. So this is, as I say, it's um, a romper. So it's got grown on sleeves. You can do, um, uh, a sleeve, no, what can you do? A round neck, I think. I'll pop in the, the, the pattern again. I can't quite remember what the variations were. But it's got a V at the front and a V at the back. So I did have to put on a label because it's very tricky to tell the difference. And then it's got an elasticated waist. It's got pockets, which I totally didn't match, but lovely big pockets. And then I made this short version. You can make the skirt pattern as well. And I will definitely make that next year. I think it'd be a really cute um, short skirt pattern. It'd be great. So this I made in a size 10 grading to a size 12. I added an inch to the bodice. I should have done more. I needed a little bit more length in the bodice. Um, but what I did to get around that, instead of flapping the casing up to put in the elastic channel, I flapped it down, which bought me another little bit of space, which is great, just a little bit more comfortable on the top. And then it does give you measurements for the rise. And my rise was about five inches more than the pattern. Um, so I added um, a couple of inches, I think I did add five, but then that was actually too many. So I had to reduce the size of the rise after I'd got it made up, but there's a fabulous tutorial on how to do that. I'll link that below. It's actually very, very straightforward about how to take apart this and redo the rise. So I think in the end, I probably added about three and a half, four inches to the rise to make it fit me and I'm very very happy with it now. As I say great pockets it's really really comfortable it's very easy to get in and out of with the, the large um, v-neck at the front. Um, it does obviously when you go to the bathroom you have to keep an eye on it but uh, it's not as bad as say a jumpsuit which would be much much longer. So yes loved this pattern I love Love Notions patterns I think they're a great fit. Um, I didn't have to add anything to the shorts length that fit me perfectly as well so just very very happy I made this up. Um, I did wear this on our summer holidays and um, I didn't put sun cream on. I put sun cream on everybody else and completely forgot about myself. So I've got a lovely V on my back. But anyway, you live and learn. Thank goodness it wasn't too bad. But yes, please wear sunscreen. So that is my Sunday romper. Uh, next up is probably one of my favourite makes actually. And this is a hack of the uh, Helen's Closet Gilbert shirt and the Tilly and the Buttons Lotta skirt. So if I put this on a hanger, it's in beautiful dead stock cotton lawn from Crafty Studio. So it's got the Gilbert shirt top with short sleeves, got the beautiful uh, yoke here burrito, makes it all neat and tidy. On this, I do like fake seams because it's all stitched down. Nothing goes flapping about the place. Um, lovely button band. These are non-functional buttons because I can pull it on over my head. Then here at the waist, it's got an elastic casing and I just added on the lot of skirt. So perfect. Now I had this in my head and it really turned out the way I wanted it. So very, very happy. Um, I make in the lotta, I make a size 10. I shorten the sleeves by about two inches and I do ordinarily add on about four inches to the tie waist shirt, but I took them off and I think I should have added, taken off a little bit more because it's a little bit blousy at the top. Not too bad, but I would like it maybe less blousy. So if I make this again, which I think I will, I'll shorten the, um, the shirt length again. But I got this, I think out of two and a half meters easily, which was great for a shirt pattern really. 
than the skirt. I make a size five. And yeah, it's just really great. Both Helen's Closet and Tilly have fabulous instructions and it just came out really well. Got these lovely buttons from Threads of Green. They match perfectly. I was actually able to bring this in and match them in person, which is wonderful, as I sewed them on in the hotel 10 minutes before we went out to wear this to a night out. So love how this came out, beautiful pattern. They, the skirt and the bodice matched together perfectly. I didn't have to alter either, which is always a win. So yeah, that's probably one of my favorite makes. I've been wearing it to work at least once a week over the summer and it's perfect under a cardigan. And yeah, I just love it. Really, really like this pattern. So I would highly recommend giving this hack a go. Next up is actually what I'm wearing. This is the La Brea tee from Half Moon Atelier, and this is the view that you can make in woven fabrics. I've made the one for knits before in a lovely green cotton jersey, and it's got beautiful binding all the way along the sleeves, all the way up the neckline, gorgeous. But this one is just a very simple boxy top. It's just got a fold over a neckline. Um, yes, did I do bias binding? I did, I did bias binding. Um, and then it's got um, a lovely cuff detail here, and then it just comes to about hip length here. So this fabric I bought in Threads of Green when I was in uh, the lovely shop down in Kilkenny and I just knew it was destined to be something very simple, very straightforward, just to show off the stripes and it's got kind of maybe Paul Smith vibes, maybe I think it's really, really nice. This fabric didn't press, I'm going to admit to that, so it was quite tricky to get these uh, cuffs in, but we got there in the end. I did manage to make the lines relatively straight because it was quite shifty fabric, but I really like how it came out and it's a beautiful little shift top. It would be nice, say, under a skirt, but just with jeans is perfect. You could wear it to work with trousers, a cardigan. I think it's a lovely, lovely make. So I've now made two libreas, the knit version and the woven. I think it's a fabulous, fabulous pattern. Um, I make a size six with no alterations at all, just a straight size six out of the pack, which fits me perfectly. So love this perfect little summer top. The next up is more fabric from Threads of Green. And as soon as I saw it, it was right up my, my boulevard because it's this beautiful green color. Gorgeous. I just put on the hanger for you. This is a completely unashamedly um, copy influenced by the lovely Rowan from the Yorkshire Sew Girl, who put this pattern in her vlog. And I thought this is gorgeous. So it is the Faustine blouse by Le Lubi de Cadia. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. A new to me fabric company. It's a beautiful top. I think it comes in a dress as well. You can't really see it in this busy fabric, but it's just got, um, it does have darts here. And then at the back is where it really kicks off because it's got this beautiful square back and it's got a little panel here and then all this is pleated. So you can see it very well in this fabric, but it gives a beautiful swish to it. Really, really nice. And I did wear this over summer holidays. It matches perfectly with my green Love Notion shorts, uh, my green linen shorts, they match perfectly. So loved making this. The instructions were lovely. This fabric pressed beautifully. Um, it does come with a facing, but I said, no, no, no. So I did binding and then I had to learn how to make binding going around um, right angles, which was actually quite straightforward. And I think gives a lovely finish on the inside. I did binding on the arms as well. And I think I'm very, very happy. So beautiful top, absolutely love it. Would highly recommend it. I think this would be beautiful in the dress as well because it would give a lovely um, big swish at the back with all the pleating. So I would encourage you to go look at other versions where you can see the pleating in more detail. If you do it in say a more structured um, fabric like a cotton, cotton poplin, cotton lawn, it'd be beautiful. But I just love the swish and the drape of this and I think the colours are just fabulous. So I made a size 40 and I added three centimetres to the length and it fits me perfectly. Um, I did lower the neckline. I thought the neckline looked a bit high. So when I was cutting this out, Instead of cutting the size 40 neckline, I went down to the smallest size, which is maybe a 36. So in the end, it, it um, lowered the neckline by about an inch, which I much, much prefer in me. Um, yeah, and as I said, the instructions were great. And I'm just really pleased to find a new to me fabric company because or pattern company because they do a beautiful make. So thank you, Ruan, for that inspiration. Really, really happy with this. So that is my Faustine blouse. So let's see how we are with my list of things. So only two left to go. Thank you very much for sticking with me. And these aren't garments, they're more, um, they're bags. I was going to say accessories, they're not really the bags. First up is the um, Hipster Pouch by Adam Sews. If you listen to my Friday Sews, you'll know I talk about this pattern an awful lot. It's given me a love of quilting, it's given me a love of binding, so thank you very much, Adam. This is my second version. I think I showed my other bag in my earlier video, I hope I did. This is the second version of the hipster pouch, so I didn't want to make it as a crossbody bag. I just wanted to make it as a makeup bag, so I do have my makeup in here. Beautiful quilting here. I did it in gold uh, stitching, which I love. I got this fabric from um, Apple Tree Crafts, which is sadly shut down. I'm sorry to hear it. And um, then I had a zip, which matches perfectly. It's fully quilted. It's got the foam on the inside. Uh, and then 
on the inside it is again fully bound so this came out really really well so happy with this so so happy with how this came out and it holds all my makeup beautifully so hot off the success of this i made another actual bag which i'll pop in photographs of because it's already been gifted to my lovely sister and it's in beautiful blue spotty fabric um where did i buy that quilter and stitch along with all the hardware the buckles the sliders the d-rings everything all the zips and again it's the the actual pouch with the uh, zip front and it's got the adjustable straps to wear crossbody so fabulous fabulous pattern so thank you very much adam for setting you on that quilting and binding path the last thing i have to show you are you delighted this is the last thing is an entry to the um the so safari 2023 which is hosted by the lovely sarah who is super bales on instagram and um yeah i think she's super bales on youtube as well i'll double check that so i'll pop in the infographic here for the so safari basically sew up something animal themed animal print animal color uh, in september so thank you sarah for setting this up and i wanted to make a little bag so i recently took from the library the stuart hillard book i think it's called bags for life he was in a sewing bee and he had a couple of fabulous patterns and this is fabric i got from threads of green again when i was there i got i think i just got must have only got half a meter but it's a fabulous border print so all this is actually the same fabric um it's just different layer or different stratas of it or whatever you'd like to call it so basically it starts like this and then it works its way down to this kind of fabric on the inside which is fabulous so loved making this quite tricky in that it just gives you measurements for each of the pattern pieces and they're not kind of all at the start of the, of the pattern they're kind of hidden throughout the pattern so you have to kind of work your way through it and cut them all out at the same time especially because i wanted to make sure i got my pattern placement correct but we got there in the end so it's got a beautiful flap over here it ties it's meant to have a little lobster thing but i just thought we'll just do a little bow then when you open it it has a little zip here and here is a little shower curtain vinyl thing to put bits and bobs then if you flap it over it's got a little flap here and in here you can put toothbrushes or makeup bags and that's kind of self-binding and that is just that on the inside and you flap it over leaving a little seam allowance which makes it look like it's bound which is very very clever i have a little patch here which is covering a little mistake um, so beautiful pockets here and then it's quilted along here in I just did it in gold thread so it, it folds very nicely and then here you can see that that beautiful fabric on this side and then it's like different that, that side spotty on the inside is a beautiful makeup bag so this is a great one for traveling you can pop all your bits and bobs in here and then flap this all closed together tie it up and you are good to go so lovely pattern great instructions Um, he does it he went back to reference other pieces in the book, which I kind of missed. So hopefully I did it justice. But yeah, really lovely pattern. I will be keen to make more of Stuart's patterns in the future. I just love making these kind of bags and little toiletries. So I've got the pattern pieces cut out now. So I think it'd be pretty easy to make another one, which would be great. But yeah, just a lovely, lovely pattern. And I have used this method um, again with the, the quilting on the inside to make it fold nicely. And just you just learn techniques as you go with new patterns and bring them to your next um, project, which is really, really great. So that is the last thing I've got made up in summer 2023. Exhausted. Thank you as always for staying with me. I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope it wasn't too long. We're probably looking at about 20 minutes, which isn't too bad for a roundup of summer. Um, I'm going to be looking towards my autumn makes coming up. Um, I don't really have massive plans for autumn as it stands. We'll see how we go. I would like to do a little bit maybe of outerwear and stuff. Um, if you'd like to leave a comment on any of these, um, any of the makes I have shown, if you have any questions, if I didn't uh, cover any topic, please let me know. As I say, I'll link everything below, so hopefully it'll answer all your questions. But do let me know what you think of them and if you are inspired to make any of them. I liked the way it is a few new to me fashion companies, new to me fabric companies. I did enjoy that side of it. And I liked that it was my summer plans, but then a few others snuck in halfway as well, which is nice, which kind of kept things up to date. And I think I do enjoy doing the seasonal makes as opposed to the monthly ones. It's far less pressure. So hopefully you did enjoy that. Um, if you did, please give me a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. I would love it to have you along on my sewing journey. Please do leave a comment. You know how much I love having the chats. Let me know what you're sewing, how your summer sewing was going. If you were sewing during the summer, but it was cold, what were you up to? And uh, yes, we're heading into the autumn. So I'm definitely looking at plans, looking at the window, at the rain and the wind. And I'm probably going to put my jumper back on because it's a little bit chilly. So thank you very, very much. Um, I did enjoy making all these and I really hope you enjoyed this video. And I shall go back now to my spend a day with me sewing. So yes, this is a very kind of mismatch of kind of um, a hybrid of two videos, which we'll see. So two videos going along in parallel, which is kind of fun. So thank you very, very much. I shall leave it there. I hope to see you all again very, very soon.
Take care, everyone. Bye.